Life is hard, but God won't give you any more than you can handle, right? Is that even true? Let's think about it. Hey, my name's Justin Harrell. I challenge you to challenge yourself to think about less taught biblical topics. One of my pet peeves is when a single verse is gutted from its context and then used to promote some idea that lingers around the truth, but usually flirts with some worldly notions or what people are itching to hear. This can happen a lot of times with many devotionals or apps that have some sort of verse of the day. Our modern cultures today have trained us to only be able to handle things in quick little bites, small little morsels. But how are we ever going to avoid false beliefs if all we can ever stomach is a single verse? And this then leads to the meme culture we have today. Memes can be funny, they can be inspirational, they can be irritating. Christian memes and mottos usually occur where diligent study is lacking. If you've been involved in a Christian community for a length of time, you will have accumulated a bag of mottos and pithy sayings that can be used in a variety of situations. Most of these are based on scripture, but you know those movies based on a true story? How they never really remain faithful to the accurate history? Well, this is what happens with our Christian sayings. God works all things for good. I can do all things through Christ. God has plans for you, hope, and a future. You'll make it. God won't give you more than you can handle. You'll notice they all put a positive spin on specific scriptures, but they are gutted from context, specifically the context of suffering. After all, the modern Western Christian is soft and fluffy, and we just can't handle too much suffering. Let's look closer. God works all things for good? Back up a few verses to Romans 8.18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Paul then goes on to say that even creation has been subjected to corruption, and the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. Then the promise comes, even in this suffering, even during your worst nightmare, God is working to redeem that awful suffering for good. Well, what about, I can do all things through Christ? Well, this is based on Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Hold it! Back the truck up. First off, this is a prison epistle. Paul is writing this while suffering imprisonment. Let's examine the context. Philippians 4.11-13. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Paul is letting you know that the joy of the Lord should not be dependent on any circumstance. Even in suffering, your joy should abound. If you missed it, I already did an entire video on this verse. Link in the description. The next Christian saying is from Jeremiah 29 11. Anyone who knows me knows that I despise the way we butcher that verse and how we repurpose it for some sort of prosperity thinking. For this one, we don't need to back up the truck that far. Just look in the rear view mirror to verse 10. For thus says the Lord, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. 70 years! Catch that? Before this promise to come back to Jerusalem, you first need to go through 70 years of captivity. How many people will even make it out the other side? You would have had to be fairly young. And then when you go back, you're pretty old. Again, I did a full video on this verse as well. Link in the description. Lastly, when trying to encourage people, we pull out the card that says, God won't give you any more than you can handle. That's not exactly what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. This is talking about temptation, and even then, Endurance. The escape is not to avoid the temptation, 
Do you pray that? God, take this temptation from me! Even Jesus could not avoid temptation. The promise is to escape sin. In other words, no matter how pressed you are to sin, God provides a way to endure the temptation, yet not sin. You can always run away, like Joseph did when Potiphar's wife was trying to seduce him. This is a big difference compared to God controlling your circumstances to not make it too difficult. Let's look at some Christians in the New Testament. Stephen was stoned. That was more than he could bear. Lazarus died of sickness. More than he can bear. James was beheaded. More than he could bear. How do I know it was more than they could bear? Because it killed them. Imagine pulling out your modern cliche for these guys. God won't give you more than you can bear. See, the Bible's full of examples of suffering. God doesn't always remove suffering. In fact, many times he uses suffering for his purposes. He gives more than we can bear alone so that we rely on him. 2 Corinthians 12, 10. For the sake of Christ then, I'm content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. We describe one of the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit as patience. But in older translations, it's known as long suffering. Long suffering. Because you perfect this quality by remaining in the suffering. This is not something the modern Western Christian is used to thinking about, although lately maybe it is. So next time you're tempted to use a well-known Christian cliche, ask yourself whether it really is biblical and accurate. It's something worth thinking about. Yeah.